Uh, now, the last portion of this presentation entails uh, figuring out a few concepts of sharing with you guys a few concepts regarding the teaching of footwork. And so, regarding this statement, practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice does. My guess is that no one disputes, disputes this statement. Uh, but now let's look at some concepts that look to bridge this principle into practice, to put this principle into practice. Here is a very simple and effective way to summarize performance. Uh, performers are presented, presented with an input, they process it, and, and, and an output um, occurs. My experience is that in sports, in, within sports in general, and martial arts in particular, coaches, instructors tend to focus on the output. They tend to focus on presenting trainees with um, a, coordin a coordinative pattern in hopes that the mere repetition of it will generate effective performance. But that rarely happens because when that is the process, the trainees are are not presented, are not do not become familiar familiarized and skilled in analyzing the input uh, on perceiving the input and processing it. Okay, so instead of analyze instead of approaching coordinative patterns as mere biomechanics, I approach them as problem solving strategies. And so, in the sense that performers exist within a context, and this context uh, has su success criteria attached to it, which generate operational goals. And these op operational goals are sought by merging one's personal traits for action together with the external stimuli uh, presented. And this gets people to, to generate and perform not movements, but problem-solving strategies. Okay, uh, this is a different approach to to teaching, to learning, uh, and one uh, with which I've experienced much more greater success over the past two decades where, uh, upon teaching. Uh, how do I go about doing that? So first, you want to ensure that trainees have the motor potential. The, the movement vocabulary, vocabulary in order to, to focus on learning and developing their martial skill that one wa wants to teach. And so in this case, the movement vocabulary basically boils down to being able to squat and move around in a squatting position. My, my, my experience tells me that all adults are already capable of doing that, but should you be unsure of this or you want to simply... Um, uh, make sure that they actually know how to squat and move in the squatting position. It's a matter of simply warming up through uh, some push-pull games like tug of war. Upon do, upon per per performing these games as a warm-up and or as a tool to ensure that everyone in the class has the necessary movement vocabulary to learn the martial skill, then you move on to the actual learning of the martial skill, which is basically doesn't have to do with moving the feet. It has to do with being able to manage your position in space according to your offensive and defensive goals. Okay, how do I go? How, how do I go about doing this? For example, regarding a offensive approaching steps, I've understood that trainees initially tend to mis, um, misunderstand uh, the positioning of this weapon uh, and as falsely assuming that this represents their combat reach. When that happens, they tend to approach excessively. Okay, A person who initially approaches by assuming that this represents combat reach ends up approaching excessively. And so in order to overcome this, I get trainees to extend their arms so as to simulate the end position of the strike. And here, by holding this position so that they have the visual reference of the weapon, then the, from here they approach their training partner. Okay? And so, and, and so they step in, but they aren't actually performing a step. They are performing an action so that uh, gets them to, to, to place themselves in a, in a certain position in space that is meant to serve the offensive goals of their action. After each repetition, the person serving as a target distances himself in order to elicit a new repetition. That, that, simple, that person, in this case White, will on purpose vary the distance, the amount of space that he distances himself in each rep so as to uh, force the, um, the approaching training partner to constantly adjust his approaching footwork either in a stride length or in actual number of steps. Then, an, uh, a following step entails 
moving in, approaching in a waiting guard, so that the trainees already have to figure out the difference and and manage man, manage mentally the difference between their initial position and their actual actual um, striking reach. And so from here, then upon finishing the approach, then they extend the upper limbs in order to ensure that they are at the correct uh, at the correct striking distance. Okay. Uh, after this stage, then they get to perform the approach with the strike as shown earlier earlier in, in the presentation. As for the training of defensive footwork, my preference is that of having trainees practice parries without any mo movement, without any, any displacement, um, while already standing in the correct uh, defensive distance. This will get them to practice parries, not only in terms of the, the coordination of the upper limbs, uh, so that they are able to intercept incoming strikes, but it also gets them to little by little become familiarized with the spatial component uh, of parries in this case the distance they, they want to be at from their opponent and so by performing all these drills the approaching drills and the pairing on the same spot you build the mental imagery uh, pertaining the spatial components of offense and defense that athletes that performers need to focus on and so that later in sparring in free play and in all the ex exercises performed with the goal of maximizing performance in sparring the trainees don't uh, end up performing only two things strikes and parries and with both strikes and parries having a special component at, uh, attached to it uh, they end up naturally moving in and out in order to best serve their offensive and defensive uh, purposes. Okay, so this is my approach to the teaching of footwork by focusing not on the mechanics, but by teach by focusing on on spatial management skills, uh, but uh, from the foundation of developing the proper mental imagery for both offensive and defensive uh, techniques.